Hello, in this video I'm going to show you how to edit an assembly while you are in assembly. So here I have a shield that I'm working on for uh, first responders and it's the design I'm trying to assess of how to use minimal amount of parts uh, to maximize the, uh, the utilization of the material I have available during this time when it's difficult to find material and uh, that way I can get the shields done and out to the people who need them without waiting for inventory to come in. So I have the two types of material that you see on the screen. I do have some clear plastic that is um, 0.030 inches thick and I have some eighth inch thick plastic that could be uh, used as a top visor. When I have the two pieces together I've got my design started where I've got my slot so that the two pieces meet in the prototype, though, it physically doesn't assemble well. These two pieces don't work well with each other because these legs are too long. So I'm back to the drawing to edit it so I can so I can fix these two sides. The best way to do it, as you can see here, everything of course is perfect in CAD, but obviously in the real world it doesn't work. So how do I fix this? The purpose of this piece right here is strictly to act as a keeper for this plastic so it doesn't pop out. That's all it is. So there does need to be a bit of force applied to put this on. We do want it to be something that snaps in so that the visor doesn't snap out. So we do want there to be some sort of, of keeper method without having to incorporate rubber bands or something else to keep it, the plastic from wanting to pop out. So that was the original intent of this, this, this uh, extension tab. But the extension tab is too long and you can't really put it together without almost breaking everything. So we don't want that. We want the first responder to not have to deal with that, the nurse, the, the doctor, whoever it is. So um, now I'm gonna go ahead and edit it. So we've got our assembly, we've got our components. I'm gonna show you on this side. Okay, there's the visor, which is this piece. Okay, we've got, the, I'm sorry, the visor is the red piece, and then we've got the shield, which is this little piece right here. Okay, the um, visor, I click on it, I right mouse button, and this is something called edit in place. See that? You got a bunch of choices. The one I'm selecting is edit in place. When I click on edit in place, then I can actually look at this piece head on. No pun intended. Go to the top view. And now I can actually go ahead, open up these elements, go to my, um, this was the sweep. Hold on, did I open up the wrong part? Uh, nope, I did. I, I did not. I, I, I opened up the correct part. But here's the thing. When you look over here on the, on the side, you might think to pick the part at the bottom because that's how you're accustomed to operating in a part file. Instead, what you're looking for is the one that is blue, okay? Notice how I in, in, instinctively went to the last item because that's how we normally do things when you're in part mode. Here we are in assembly mode and you don't do that. This is all black in coloring and this is blue. As I've mentioned before in class, and I'll mention forever, SolidWorks is subtle. Annoyingly, in our case, it's even more subtle than you think. Remember, our shield is already transparent. So the fact that the shield itself became transparent, you wouldn't know <laughs> that that means that the solid part, this item, is the item that you're in and editing because our shield is transparent anyways, get it? So the only visual cue you're gonna have is on the left side, well, there's two visual cues. One is on the left side, you see that the stuff in blue is what you're tweaking. On the far right side of the screen, you're gonna see this little, little button right here, okay? Which implies that you are editing the part in assembly, that's what that means. Okay, that's what this means right there. That is how you know where to look. So the visor is what we're editing. Okay, so we're in the right place. But I wanted to make sure you saw that because it is not obvious. 
where we're supposed to be. Okay, so again, back to the top view, back to the visor. Over here, I've got my extrude. I've got my sketch. I'm going to go ahead and edit the sketch directly. I've got all my crazy dimensions. The one side's a mirror to the other side. I uh, made it one and a half. Now, watch what happens. You'll notice I did not position the hole. I did not give it a location. That's where the string goes through to, to tie it to the back of your head. I'm going to change it to one. Now, watch what happens. Okay, did you see that? Okay, I'm going to undo. Okay. This piece, we want to leave where it is, okay? But the piece that moved wasn't this piece down. It was this piece up because I have this piece locked in. See that? See, it's got a fix on it. So I undo that fix, click on the item that I would like to fix. I fix that guy. Notice that? Now, of course, I get an error message. See that? Anytime you get a bunch of, uh, I call it mustard right now, you're getting that because this dimension, I got to pop it out of there. That dimension was fighting this constraint. And the reason I was fighting that constraint is because even though, let's see, I might move now. Let me try. Even though I removed that constraint, see, it's still not moving. So it's got something else locking it, keeping it locked in place. And that something else, if, if I remember correctly, is this line right here. I would have to delete that line. Now let's see if it can move. There it goes. See that? Now you see how this moves and the hole does not. That's because the constraint is not there. So let me undo a little bit, go backwards and show you what I mean. The kind of things you have to fix when you tweak. When you're editing stuff, you're going to find out all the quote-unquote mistakes in your work. And I say quote-unquote because they're not necessarily mistakes. They were fine for when you did it, but now you have to change them. And that's the most important thing to learn with any of these software packages, how to manipulate existing objects. Not just create objects, but deal with what you got instead of just making stuff from scratch. So a few things have to be changed. This constraint needs to go away, the, the, the lock. This one, uh, I'm not going to add it yet. I am going to delete this guy. Okay, by deleting that guy, that should alleviate the issue here so I can fix that in place. And I, boom, don't get an error message, so everything is good. Now, now, I'm going to put in a dimension here because I know what's going to happen here. So I'm going to actually put this dimension. Wow, that's a weird number. Let's make it something uh, 0.3125 just for fun. It's a slightly precise number. It's still not showing as if it's locked in place. That's interesting, but that's all right. I'm going to ignore that. Okay, so something moved. Let me undo real quick to see what that was. Ha, huh, the whole thing just shifted over. I'm going to ch change this to to one, one inch. And the hole now should move with it. Concurrently, yeah, the other side does lockstep with it because I did lock these two sides in together. So that's correct. When I OK out of this, when I OK out of this, let's see what we got. Okay. Notice, okay, now again, the visor itself, the shield, is actually clear, so you don't realize the fact that you are even editing this part, but you are. I am going to round the corners because I don't want uh, sharp edges. It's always bad, especially against your ear. This won't be against your body, but uh, this piece you can, you can snag yourself with it. So I'm going to go ahead and throw in some fillets. So the question is, well, one inch is obviously too much. And if you click on something you don't want, just click on it and hit the delete button on your keyboard. Uh, 0.25 would probably be the best. And all you got to do is pick the little edge. That's all you got to do. I'm going to pick the edge on the other side because that will help with clearing the um, turn. Of course I'm going to do this side at the same time because I am, as I like to always remind everyone to be lazy. 
I just want to get as much done in one shot. There we go. See that? So now that's rounded. Now some people might ask what's with this angled element because I want to make sure I have a strong contact point. See this? You need to have a strong contact point where you're going to have the most stress with the, with the body of the object. If I made a sharp spot here, just a sharp opening or a sharp piece, then the contact area would be very small. You actually want to maximize your contact area. The other question you might ask is what's with the extended slot? This, this is a slot opening in the, in the plastic is much longer than obviously where it needs to go in. Technically, you need to be able to clear the object. So this is the redesign of the shield. I will not know if it'll actually work until I get back into the shop and go ahead and build it. But this should work better than the previous design. See how it looks on the sides? Uh, there is a little foam piece that you obviously can't see in this picture because this is only the plastic element. The um, idea is this piece does bend a little bit and it should clear this. But we're going to find out if it does in uh, the next time I go out in the shop. So for now, at least now you see how to edit an assembly. Edit, a, I'm sorry, edit a part in assembly. And when you're done with that, you just OK out of it, and poof, now you see the difference? I know it's a shield. <laughs> the shield is not, it's transparent, so it doesn't help. One thing I can do to try to emphasize the difference is let me go ahead and, and change the color. Uh, or the text, texture. Let me change the texture. There. And that didn't do much. Yeah. there's the whole part there you go how's that see now it's significantly different in appearance see that much darker now if i click on visor and then edit part boop now do you see the difference see that's how you know you're in it if your part is transparent the changeover will not be as obvious so please be aware of that something else that this video teaches you this is I'm out of the part and back into the assembly. I click on the part, right mouse button, edit part, and I'm back in, and you see the difference. Now what I'm editing is the actual shield. See how the other piece turned a pink transparent? That's because that's not the part I'm editing. If I exit out of this, there you go. If I go back into the visor, edit that, you will see the other piece goes shaded and this piece turns a different color okay hopefully you got something out of this video have fun making assemblies and then tweaking them after you find out they don't work when you try to build them take care bye bye